Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we're going to look at how to work with the source code of MVS 3.8 as delivered, uh, for instance, with the amazing uh, TK4- distribution by Jürgen Winkelmann or any of the other distributions I've showed in this channel in the last six months or so. And specifically we're going to look at how to work with the source code of JS2. And the reason for that is that um, uh, maybe not everybody's aware that MVS 3.8 is actually an open source operating system, meaning that all the source code to rebuild uh, all the components that we have in MVS 3.8 are there, are part of the distribution of the of the operating system. And it is intended for people to use that source code to make enhancements or provide fixes for things that people want to achieve. And that's how it was all through the 60s and 70s and 80s until at some point in the 90s um, or late 80s, IBM started to switch to source uh, to object code only specifically for uh, VM, for the VM operating system, but also other components of the MVS operating system started to get closed by IBM. But uh, we're lucky because in MVS 3.8, everything we see and use uh, is actually there in the source code installed in the distributions that we use. For instance, TK4. Now, uh, I had released a couple of years ago, actually it says here, four years ago, uh, this video, which was actually made by Professor René Ferlon, um, my friend uh, from up in Canada. And he made this video on how to add more spool space to JS2, the spooling system of MVS, and then also uh, showed how to make a cluster of JS2. And um, uh, MVS 3.8 is perfectly capable of forming a cluster where two or three operating systems uh, or mainframes work together and the JS2 spool is the way that they talk to each other. So work comes to any of the mainframes running MVS 3.8 and goes into a shared spool, as you can see here. And, um, and because it's shared, every system can read from it, process the jobs, and then write the uh, results back into the spool. However, um, if you look at this video, M128, you will see that there was a bug in JS2, which forced every job to be launched twice. And some people over the years have written to me, uh, how can this be fixed? And I've actually on uh, several places shown uh, that there's a very simple fix for that. But the question is always, okay, if I fix something in the source code of JS2, what is the procedure to rebuild JS2 or reassemble it or relink, whatever you want to call it? And that's what we're going to see in this video. So let's switch to our uh, two most important uh, applications here. One is my 3270 terminal connected to a, a remote uh, MVS 3.8 TK4. As you can see here, this is the one by Jurgen Winkelmann, update 8. And uh, here you see the console of the uh, machine running here inside a, uh, a on a, on a Linux machine inside a screen uh, window. Um, the screen would be the predecessor or an, an older version of T of Tmux or Biobu or anything like that. And as you can see, uh, uh, it's running here. Everything is up and running, and uh, we have one TSO user. And that's me here in this uh, 3270 window. So I was just talking about the uh, this little um, bug. I don't even want to call it a bug inside JS2 as delivered here, which uh, makes it a little bit more challenging to run jobs in a in a cluster called a mass uh, cluster um, for uh, to to uh, to connect two mainframes together. And specifically. Uh, what happens is that you have to launch the job twice if you want it to have executed the first time it will um, report some error I don't remember anymore which one but um, so th I found later that the bug is actually here it happens it's not a bug it's actually the just to as, as it is generated and assembled for TK4 is not meant to be run in, in a mass cluster, in a JS2 cluster. It's meant to run on a single machine. If you want to run it on a cluster, you would have to make a very simple change, which is um, uh, 
make this one a comment and then uh, instead of checking for the refresh and that's why you have to do it twice you would just uh, jump to um, let's call it mass okay and then we can just jump here unconditionally okay by doing that we now uh, jump directly here and the error will disappear now the question of course is when we make changes to um, to Jess to how do we rebuild Jess to in modern language in older language it would just be how do we relink Jess to and um, but the so we'll get to that in a second but what I want to show here is that we actually have the full source code of Jess 2 here in this uh, uh, partition data set it's called sys one dot hasp source um, hasp stands for Houston automatic spool program and uh, SRC of course stands for source so you can see here the various source uh, files that build as a whole uh, HASP or JES2. HASP and JES2 are, uh, are two, um, two names that go together and in fact if you look at here at the console uh, I don't know if you ever noticed that most messages or actually all messages that uh, MVS and ZOS gives you uh, in the console is always three letters report relating to the subsystem or the the product that is issuing the message so in IRB would be the performance uh, report uh, subsystem called MF1 back in those days and um, and uh, and so or this one uh, IEE which uh, relates to the to the uh, nucleus and so mo all messages are always three letters and then uh, three numbers for the message itself so you can look it up in the in the documentation and then there's always a, a letter in the end which stands for I for informational so just being informed uh, E for error and um, and then uh, W for warning and um, and so the only one that has four letters is this one are the just two messages and that's because uh, just two issues hasp uh, messages Houston automatic spool program and that wasn't part uh, and, and the reason for that is that just two was not really part of the uh, OS 360 operating system when it was released in the 60s um, there was no spool program uh, then uh, you had initiators and writers and you would get input directly from punch cards and they would go directly to printers or or I don't know to discs or tapes or something and there was no spooling and then uh, during the Apollo Moon program, uh, there was a significant presence of IBM developers and engineers in Houston, in Texas, and uh, and a bunch of people from IBM wrote a HASP or the the spooling program. Some people say they invented it. I have I'm not sure if that is true or not, but uh, the concept of spooling I'm referring to. But they wrote HASP, and uh, and over time IBM took it. Everybody loved it and they started to be shared at the share conferences and uh, later on IBM adopted it and made it a standard part of, uh, of MVS. For a while there was also, <coughs> excuse me, for a while there was also a JS3 which is more of a, of a cluster um, uh, spooling system and in the last four or five years IBM has actually sold off JS3 to an outside company and uh, I think it's Phoenix um, and IBM only has JS2 and this uh, has been strongly encouraging users the remaining mainframe users out there in the world to switch to, to JS2 so the question is we make changes um, to uh, JS2 because it's it's there <laughs> and uh, and it is meant to be a basis for enhancement and improvement and bug fixes right um, the, and uh, uh, very often I, I, I get people that are being very surprised when there are bugs in MVS or in subsystems such as uh, JS2. How can it be? Oh, well, there's lots and lots of bugs. There's lots and lots of code in MVS. And so where there's lots of lines of code, you will have, of course, uh, some proportion of bugs uh, in those lines. 
and uh, it's not unusual at all to encounter bugs such as you know any other operating system linux has bugs windows has bugs everything has bugs and so does the um, the mainframe uh, operating system now uh, throughout the early 70s ibm and, and throughout this all the 70s ibm went through a a, an, a huge effort to eliminate bugs and um, within 10 years they had uh, fixed over 1 million bugs in OS 360, MVT, and then MVS. So, yeah, early um, early versions of OS 360 on the mainframe, people were sometimes happy if OS 360 would run for 15 minutes at a time before crashing. So that's how buggy it was in the beginning. So um, any place you want to make a change, you can, you can, we're welcome to make uh, changes. And uh, so I just showed you the locate as nook. This is the nucleus where we just made a change down. I think it was, uh, yeah. So we just made the change here and I commented the previous line. So if I want to go back to a non-mass cluster, I can just, um, I can just change it back here again. Uh, I'm just making this change just to show the point on how to rebuild JS2, um, of course, uh, some knowledge of how JS2 works is necessary. There's excellent documentation on BitSavers about uh, about this code here. And so um, uh, some people have asked me, for instance, in the past, where are the, where is this beautiful printout made that JS2 does when you finish, the, finish a print and you have the job numbers written in those big letters? Let me show you. Yeah, so uh, this is the routine they were looking at now is the routine that prints this separator page this whole page here so you have the user ID the job the class and then um, uh, some information that actually can be provided by the user in the JCL and then the printer and the use the system ID and the job again so all this is printed in the module that we're going to look at now And here it is. So, um, so first it needs to go get the job ID. Uh, it needs to test if it's a 3800 printer because that's completely different. It's not a line printer, it's a page printer. So basically you need to build an image before you can print it. Uh, if it is not, it goes here. And then um, the line count for the output is taken. Uh, test if it's a local printer and uh, oh you can see here uh, jess who just gave us a little hello maybe it can hear us as we look at its at its source code so let's continue to look here um it gets the once 30 lines um, for the page if it doesn't have 30 lines then it skips to the next page so just to keeps a pointer for each line on the page when it's uh, writing a an output, so it knows exactly where it is in the page, obviously, um, because there are some areas. Sometimes it needs to print something on on a full page, on a full new page. In this case, it needs 30 lines for the separator page, and um, uh, and here is the routine. It get the job type, the job number. Uh, left justify the job number so that it's always uh, what this means is that if it's je job 12 it will justify the 12 to the left it's not like a job 0, 0, 0, 0012 or something like that um, and uh, by the way I don't know if you're aware but you can actually uh, change the counting of jobs in MVS uh, in, in Jest 2 from the console let me show you how to do that so right now my uh, latest job was uh, let me check here about 1000 and something 1029 let's say i'm starting a new development project and i want to keep the uh, the listing here nicely separated by job number so i don't have to go and look at each and every one to see what it is um, so if i want to do that i can just uh, change the next job number to start with a with a whole new number scheme. So uh, the way I would do it here in the console is I would say uh, $t 
T stands for change and then job and let's say 2000 uh, let's put it all in uppercase doesn't really matter job 2000 if I say that um, just will not tell me job numbers will now start from 2000 so the next job will be 2000 and then 2001 and if I want to change it um, you know later on to job 3000 for the next uh, for the next program I'm working on or back to zero I can easily do that um, and it was actually done in production uh, I don't know about today but in the 80s to separate shifts so shifts would start with different uh, job uh, numbers so that when uh, people looked in the morning at the uh, at the listings in the in the spool they could see from which uh, uh, shift it came first shift to second shift the third shift and they would have I think back then uh, 3,000 for the first shift, 5,000 for the for the second shift, and maybe 7,000 for the third shift, something like that. But you can easily change that. Just a little trick here. So um, we were looking at the uh, at the source code where the separator page is printed. Um, so we're looking here. Um, um, look, we take the all the information we need for the separator page we just looked at before. This one, right? So uh, now it's like taking all this information, the um, the class, etc. Let's put this down. And the job number, the job name, the system, the system ID, exactly what we, what we said before, right? The system ID, the job number, the job name. This is the job name here with the user at, uh, at the beginning and um, and uh, and then the room number here we have the room number which we in this case was not provided and then time and date um, and it continues on and let's see where the actual printing is done So, yeah, here. And here is the block letter routine. This is the routine that does this part here, the, the, the part where you have these giant letters. So here it is. Um, so of course it's a function, so it, it can generate for any kind of uh, any kind of words um, fill line with blanks scan for last, last non-blank character compute beginning so it needs to, of course to understand where to start because it's as I said it's landed um, or for the for the job name but it's not slanted for the for the job number uh, here it is <laughs> that's exactly what I just said so here it tests if it's a this needs to be slanted or not it's a generalized routine um, if it needs to be slanted then of course it will have to calculate the beginning of each letter it's slightly different um, and then um, it has a letter index starting from zero it can only do printable characters here so it builds its own little table and yeah and here it is so beautiful routine very compact um, but uh, that's how it gets done so I've had over the years maybe I don't know 20 30 emails or messages asking me where is the separator page generated here it is starting from around 6400 6500 in this uh, source code module so if you make any changes here obviously um, you need to know what you're doing uh, and um, I forgot to mention this is of course all in assembler um, Almost all of MBS 3.8 is written in assembler, and um, uh, and of course, um, at some point, then PLS came into the game, where IBM started using a, a dialect of PL1 called uh, PLS, which is has the capability to address uh, registers directly, and uh, you can mix assembler and PL1 code into the same uh, source code. But here it's almost all uh, assembler. So now when we made some changes and we're coming now to the main question of this video is how do we 
rebuild Jazz 2. So to do that, uh, let me show you there is a, oops, there is a, uh, hmm, ah, here it is. Uh, there is a job here that um, uses the uh, linkage editor to relink all of uh, Jazz 2 and um, it has all the includes it needs to uh, use and then in the end it produces a new Jazz 2. Obviously uh, once you rebuild this you will need to uh, re-IP all your machine, that's obvious, but um, it is actually quite a simple and, uh, and small job for the complexity of what it needs to do. So why don't we uh, execute this once to see uh, how well this does. So um, what it does, of course, is it refers to the um, all the source code and um, and the link library. Um, this is where it ends up, and of course, it's authorized because just two needs to be authorized. And oh, one more thing I wanted to mention is you can actually build. You can. Have, there's nothing that prohibits you to run two just two systems or three just uh, two just uh, two systems in the same on the same MVS instance. Uh, that's called PolyJS. Uh, and uh, for instance, our use case is where we want to have one for non-mass, for non-clustering, and one for a clustering uh, version of JS2. They can run side by side, and then they won't step on each other, provided they all have their own resources, their printers, their um, their initiators, and their writers. So as long as all that is uh, is properly configured, you can have more than one JS2 running and maybe I'll make a video in the future how to have more than one just two running on the same machine. So let's start this in the meantime and let's keep an eye here on the on the MIPS uh, counter and uh, on the IO because it's of course it's going to do a, quite a bit of work but this is a very fast machine so it, it should be just a blink of an eye so keep an eye here on the MIPS indicator and well that went quick so that didn't uh, take too long. Um, oh, job 3000, because we set it here to 3000. So no, now, of course, this is job 3000. Let's go check it out. Um, and here's job 3000. And yep, yeah, that went through without errors. So we have now rebuilt Jazz 2 with that change that I made so that um, now just 2 can work in a cluster without having to reissue the job twice to get it done. And of course um, uh, this is um, the, uh, the linkage editor giving us the output. I love by the way how uh, RevEdit by Greg Price, the, the environment here inside TSO is color coding all this perfectly. Really like what what he did here. Much better than ISPF if you ask me. ISPF only has one color. There's no color coding in the in the listing viewer in SDSF. So and uh, as you can see here it's now been replaced and um, yeah we have replaced and rebuilt uh, just two here. Now um, I'm gonna take this one this uh, this uh, link Jazz 2 member to rebuild uh, Jazz 2 and put it in GitHub. Let me show you where it is. So I will be putting a link to this in the description below the video you're watching right now. But if you head over to github.com slash moshix slash MVS, so this repository here, and then you search for uh, link Jazz 2, um, you'll find this uh, JCL here and that's the exact one we just executed this works and uh, and that's how you relink just to or rebuild just to very simple just take this one put it somewhere on your MVS TK4 minus and uh, and re-execute and that's how we can uh, fix small things or make small improvements or understand or learn um, from the amazing work of uh, the people at IBM have done with MVS and all the subsystems. VTAM for me is the most complicated of all the subsystems. Uh, it's almost like a black art, um, understanding VTAM. 
the one that we have in, in MVS 3.8 is quite simple, but as it evolved more and more and you could create and connect all these VTEMs together, um, it became uh, quite a complex uh, subsystems. And, and even though it's well written, um, it's very um, terse code, very hard to understand. Uh, Jest 2 is much simpler and easy to follow. Uh, even though it's a complex sub subsystems on its own, obviously. But um, so, uh, in response to M128, um, here it is, and um, there's a lot of stuff here, obviously. So you will have to search. Um, it's a popular repository because there's so much stuff in there. I should probably one day organize it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, now, this is for um, for JS2. There's, of course, other ways to uh, rebuild MBS uh, itself or the nucleus or other parts. But uh, I thought um, we'll look into how to rebuild JS, uh, building JS2 specifically. Um, somebody have also asked um, what the various uh, JS2 um, console commands are for the version that we have here in TK4. And I've actually made a video about uh, 10 days ago, but um, the uh, the microphone had given up on me. So I spoke for about an hour and then in the end I realized that all the audio wasn't there. So I need to find the motivation to do it all over again <laughs> after I spent so much time uh, making a video. But uh, in the meantime, here's something uh, for people interested in uh, doing advanced stuff in MVS 3.8 TK4 minus. If you have any questions about JS2 or about all these changes or about any of the things you've seen in this video, please post comments below this video. If you're not subscribed yet, now is a perfect time to do it. I want to thank all of you for also for getting um, me over the 10,000 subscriber mark. Um, let's uh, go here and oops, uh, where is it? If you go to the Moshix channel, you will see that um, I have now 10,000 plus subscribers. So this is huge. I would have never expected that um, when I started this channel that I would have one day so many subscribers. I mean, I sometimes try to imagine 10,000 people in a stadium and uh, I'm speaking to all of you. Of course, it's a huge responsibility not uh, to disappoint people or to, uh, to do proper research. And of course, uh, errors and bugs sneak in always when you when you create something. But overall, the community is amazing, great support, um, safe for very few people. Most people have only left very good comments and encouraging remarks. So I want to thank all of you. You're an amazing community. Um, what we've built around MVS and VM370 and DOSVS, uh, this ancient operating systems is quite amazing. Um, all the people who've created these distributions, of course, uh, and uh, many of the programs are, uh, are specifically or are, are huge contributors, but also um, everybody who participates and goes to the Discord channel and uh, has discussions with everybody else. I just love it. So thank you, everybody. As I said, the link to the uh, to the Jest 2 link linking job is uh, in the description below this video. And see you soon again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.